found the trees? The yeah. trees found you? The tree, well, the trees found me. I went, I went to Beth's house and uh, saw this beautiful tree and, and she and I have um, shared a lot of energy and crystals and all kinds of fun stuff together and um, and I just, the tree was just glowing. And I said, you, you gotta tell me how you did it. You gotta tell me how you made it. And so she described it and I just started to play with the wire and the beads that I had. and. Um, it was nice to be able to pull out the beads because it's been 15 years since I've really sat down and played with the stuff that I've had. But more importantly, the crystals. Um, I was gifted last year uh, something that you can't even put a value to. Um, my massage therapist is one of my oldest and dearest friends. I've known him pretty much my entire life, but um, we came together him and his massage role and me in my broken role at the time um, when I was 22 and um, he did he's done polarity all these years and so he and I used to go to rock shows and we'd get gems and different stones and do different healing stuff and he retired a few years ago he was in his 70s and he called me Last year and said um, I want you to come over I want to give you my entire library and I want to give you all my crystals that's a very sacred gift Wow yeah it looks like a rock shop exploded in my house <laughs> which is very cool so um, so when I found this these trees or this tree um, I it's funny I knew immediately I wanted to make one for Cindy I don't know why, I just, she was the first person I needed to make one for and I made one out of Iolite and Beth helped me uh, twist it together and actually turn it into a tree. And, uh, and then we talked about all the possibilities of how to mount it to rocks and stuff, but I had a lot of crystals that I had collected over the years from gem and stone shows that weren't healing crystals per se, um, but just things that I had collected because I thought they were kind of neat. So I had a pretty good base to start with collection um, and it really exploded from there um, I think at last count I've given away 35 trees um, most of those were over Christmas I know a lot of Sagittarius Capricorns Aquarians and Pisces so it kind of happened over that that period of time and uh, one of the last ones in February that I'd given away was to my aunt and she said oh my god I've always wanted one of these and I was like really isn't that interesting you know just like and in January or no I guess it was March that that um, the cry on event came to be when my friend said oh you can set up a table and put out signs and brochures and for your attunement and homeopathy and, and I said well how about my trees? You know, would that be too much to manage? Would it be acceptable by the, you know, the people that are actually doing the show? And he's like, no, no, it wouldn't be a problem at all. They say, bring whatever you want to bring. And Leaping Lizards was going to be there, and another woman who does beautiful, beautiful jewelry sets up tons of tables and does it. So I just set up a little table and had, I don't know, maybe 15 trees or something. And um, I think I sold eight trees in like two days. And people just, they were so drawn to them. Um, but when I was making them, what hadn't really occurred to me when I started making them was that um, there was an attunement component right. to this. And I inadvertently kind of caught myself attuning the trees. So I go through this process where um, I never know, I don't necessarily start out saying, oh, I'm gonna make this style tree. I'm gonna make a maple, I'm gonna make a weeping willow, I'm gonna, I have no idea. And I don't even know what stone I'm gonna start with. It's usually whatever stone happens to be calling to me at the time, and I just honor that for whatever reason it is. And I start twisting. And um, there are several different yes. styles that I make, but I never know what the style is gonna be. Um, even when I'm twisting the branches, I don't really know. It's all spirit led. It's all spirit led. So, one of the words you used yeah, earlier so was love. Stay a bit 
It is, yeah. And in making the things that I made for gifts, um, the, what I found was the love that was pouring into these was enormous. And I think that's the other component of the attunement is when I'm when I'm attuning something. Um, I'm making those connections with spirit guides and higher self and angels and my own and um, you know when I'm attuning the trees I'm making that connection with the tree and a lot of times I don't even know who the tree is for until it's done right um, it, it was pretty rare that I would start out and say I'm going to make this tree for this person it was more a case that I would make this tree and it would say hey you need to give me to this person because they really need this and so there were times that I would attune them as I was working and I think that we all do that anyways when we're working with crystals and stones especially um, they're attuning us certainly at the same time that we're attuning and I found that if I tried to work with a specific stone, like forced myself because I was trying to do something, um, I would feel really toxic afterwards. Like I had overdosed on that particular crystal. Malachite was the one that really did me in. Um, I had to put things down for about a week after playing with like a whole container of Malachite. So it's, it's, it's interesting. They all have a story. In talking about attunement um, and how that's connected with the trees and how the trees really ask for their owners and um, so the the cry on event was wonderful to have the validation and get the feedback from these people that are tapped into uh, more of this mindset you know being connected and really uh, conscious this would be a good way to put it was really lovely and um, I didn't really know where I was gonna go with it I just knew that I had to keep making trees and um, I stay up crazy hours I work I work two and a half three days a week at an office and, um, and the moment I sit down at night I'm making trees so what does making trees do for you? Because well, the trees go out and they... Do they for others. Do for others. They yeah. bring healing. They yeah. bring love. Yeah. They bring attunement. Yeah. But that comes back at you, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when I go through the process of making a tree and it's formed into a tree, then I need to find a stone. And I went to a gem and stone show that they have here in the spring and I worked very exclusively with the gem and mineral uh, society of Maine they have a huge auction table so I, I think I bought over 80 rocks or them. and um, I came home with a bounty to say the least that day and then found out that there was another rock show in Massachusetts um, a couple weeks later and said I'm just gonna do this and I stayed within my the money that I had made and said okay I'm not gonna spend any more than that sure I went over <laughs> but it's funny uh, the wire I buy locally at a craft store and it's like I can spend like two dollars a day I go in there and I get you know, a discount and I will buy like one thing of wire a day and I was thinking about it one day like this is crazy how much money I've spent on wire. And then I was like, wait a minute, my husband spends $3 a day on coffee. <laughs> so if this serves as my coffee, I'm really good with that. That's awesome. That's yeah. a great way. That's a great way to look great at it. Great way to look at it. Yeah. So you're now, you're, you have a table that you set up at first. I, and I fell asleep last Friday, by the oh, way. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I took an hour and a half nap. Good for you. I'm envious. <laughs> well, you wrote a you wrote a comment on Facebook that you needed a nap one day, yeah. and I wanted to call you up and say, I need a nap every day. <laughs> Can I, I feel I feel guilty about that. Naps are beautiful things. They're they're just like a walk in the woods, you know. They're very refreshing. Refreshing. We need it. Um, so 
I'm trying to think about how have, how have the trees the trees, changed your changed your life. The trees have definitely changed my life because it puts me in that place of attunement on a daily basis. Even when I'm twisting branches, I'm not necessarily attuning them this way, same way that I do when I select the stones, but once I have the tree actually made into the shape of a tree, then I need to find a base. And there have been times where I've been like, I really want it to go on this base. And the tree's having nothing to do with it. It won't, it just won't happen. So my dining room table is covered in rocks from my adventures at the rock shops. And um, I was really fortunate to connect with the president of the Maine Mineralogical and, and Gem Society back before Christmas. And he gave me an entire box of rocks just to put my, my gifts on. <coughs> And I saw him at the gem show, and I have since joined the Gem and Stone Society, and am going to go out rock hounding this weekend. So that's another component of this, is having that connection with the base stones from the moment they come out of the earth. And I think that's really important. The trees have changed my life in so many different ways. Um, the interaction with people, again, to, it's not just about selling, it's about sharing. I did the Old Pork Festival, just down the street from here, um, at the middle of June. And I made, I had 60 trees. My goal was 100, but I didn't make it. So I got to 60 trees, I had a lovely setup. My son came with me, which was great. 40 to 50,000 people attend the Old Pork Festival. I thought, I'm sure to sell a tree here. <laughs> The reaction was overwhelming. The response was phenomenal. Kids could be 20 feet away and they would catch the trees, catch sight of the trees and run for the table. Wow. And it was really breezy, so, and the trees move. Um, they're very fluid. And, um, you know, I, I always tell people that trees are virtually indestructible. The worst thing that's ever happened to a tree is a friend's dog ate hers. <laughs> but um, you can pick them up, you can mash them, you can, they're very malleable. Um, they're, the epoxy that I use to attach them to the stone makes sure that they're not going anywhere. You can have a three pound stone and pick it up by the stem and it's not going anywhere. So I encourage people. Pick them up, play with them, flip them over, feel them. How does it, you know, how how does it speak to you? And then people will ask about the stones. Do they have any meaning? Do they? And years ago, I used to know all of this stuff. I used to know what all the stones meant. I don't remember any of it. So I bring. I have books that I bring, and I encourage people to read about the stones. I tell them what they are, and I encourage them to read. Because as you know, everybody interprets what they need right. differently and what they need to gain from it. So it's not about me interpreting what they need. But this past week weekend, um, I decided to set up on Commercial Street. We had gone down, a friend of mine and I had gone down and set up for one of the cruise ships that had come in. And they now have a new area in Portland that they've designated for crafters when the cruise ships hit a certain size. And sales were okay. Um, but, you know, just the exchange with people is really wonderful. It's something that I enjoy a lot. Um, I love talking to people. I can talk to anybody. Um, when people approach my table, it's not even about the tree. It's not about selling them a tree. It's just that they're there. Connection. They, yeah. It's connection, and they're there because they need something that's there. So I'm just there being there and sharing whatever that happens to be, whatever they happen to need. And this past weekend, I decided to set up down on Commercial Street, um, out uh, across from Bill's Pizza, someplace in that area, close to the Portland Lobster Company. And I uh, had some wonderful vendors around me. And um, a lot of people in town from all over the place. One group, a whole family was here from New York, and uh, they stopped at the table and chatted for a couple of minutes and they said, you know, we have to go do some things, but we'll be back. 
and it was um, a man probably in his 50s that said, I'm coming back. And I said, okay, I'm gonna be here until two or three. And he said, okay. And so at about quarter after two, I saw him walking across the street and I said, your timing is perfect. I was just about ready to get to pack up. And he said, that's why I'm here. I, I need a tree from you. <laughs> and I said, okay. I said, you know, tell me, tell me more. And he said, well, it's for my daughter. And, um, and he said, and I want your suggestion. I want to know what I should get her. And I said, well, tell me about her. And uh, he said, she's 34. She just gone through a nasty divorce. She just moved back in with her mother. She has a dog. She works with him. She's a writer. Um, he said, she's not happy. She's not happy about living with her mom. She's not happy in her life. She's really stressed. Even before he said any of that, I knew I knew what tree she needed. And it was so amazing to be gifted with that information. It was like, this is the tree that she needs. It's actually in this book. And uh, I said, you know, every tree here has the attribute or the energy of reducing stress and grounding and protection. And it wasn't intentional that I picked those stones, they picked me. So that's part of what I think these trees are putting out there is getting people to appreciate their roots again or create roots um, and just be grounded and be present and be feel solid. Um, but this one particular tree is a canopy of pearls and it sat on a blue calcite and those two um, stones pearls and stones have this great calming effect and the ability to allow you to release any dissent that you have uh, that you're holding and uh, I said you know I think I think this is her tree and he said perfect I'll buy it and and he did, and off he went. And um, and then I see kids come up in here. They're doing this, you know, touching all the crystals, and picking them up, and they're holding them in their hands, and, and they're talking to the trees, and they're asking me all these questions. And you just see these lights go on inside the people, and it's it's beautiful. So that is a huge gift to me um, to be able to share that and just feel like it's um, it's not something I've done, it's something that's just come through me. I'm right. just the vessel. So I have a couple questions. One is, you had about a 15 year gap, it sounds like, work from, from creativity. Well, not entirely. There, were, there, were, there have been things that I have done between those times. Um, you know, uh, I've always got something that I'm kind of picking away at, whatever it happens to be. I'm not a knitter. I've always wanted to be able to knit, but I have tried many times and just can't master it. Um, I did wreaths one year for, I don't know, about a year. I think it was about a year. Um, there were all these little packages individually wrapped and then made into wreaths with a big ribbon and um, tried selling those and ended up giving giving them away. Everybody that got them loved them, but they just never took off. Um, somebody had said, maybe if you filled all the boxes with presents. <laughs> I said, yeah, no. Um, I love gardening. That's been really my palette for a while, but a couple of years ago I hurt myself and haven't really been out in the yard. Even had a neighbor ask me recently, an elderly neighbor said, uh, you know, we were starting to wonder if you were okay because you haven't been in the garden in such a long time. And, uh, and I miss it. And I'm getting to the point now where I can actually start to do that again, which is nice. Um, but yeah, the, the jewelry piece you'd go to a craft fair back when I did it 25 years ago and you'd be like one of three jewelers in the whole craft fair now it's every other table so it really took off 
and uh, and I just it didn't it wasn't special anymore, you know. So I, I just I had kept all of the beads. I still had all the beads, and whenever somebody's birthday or Christmas or baby or something would come up, I would make them a gift. I always found that when I was able to make it specifically for someone, it always was far more special than something that if I tried to mass produce just random things but with the trees it's different it, and your energy when you talk about the trees it's immeasurable it is so far beyond any imaginary boundary how, is that how it feels on the inside it is it absolutely is um, so when I when I do finally match a tree with its base um, I have to hold it while I'm gluing it so that it doesn't fall over. And I found that that's one of the best times for me to do the attunement. Right. And um, so what the trees have given me is they've given me pause. They've given me that meditation. They've given me that time that we rarely take for ourselves um, and expanded it tenfold because I'm not just doing an attunement, I'm sharing an attunement with this living, breathing, vibrating thing. And it has a purpose. It has a path. It has a place to go. Um, and I'll get attached to the trees. And I was telling somebody this, um, this week that they were looking at this whole table covered in trees. There must have been 30 trees on the table. And they were like, I can't pick. <laughs> <laughs> and they would they would line, and it's really wonderful to watch this because people will pick all these, and they're like, but I like this one, and but I really like this one, and, and I don't know which one I want. And so I tell them, put them all together and see which one speaks to you, Mr. Hawkins. And then read about it and see which one you feel like you need in your life right now. And if you need another one, that's okay too. Um, but the night before a show, I will pack up everything and put it in the car. And I'll get up in the morning and the house feels empty. Uh. It's, like, it's not just all the clutter and the stuff and because it's all over the place. Um, it's, it, there's a void because all the trees are there. You know, when I had 60 of them, put them all on the table and they took a shot from above and it's just phenomenal. Just phenomenal the energy that's in the house because of that. Well equally phenomenal is your joy that comes from the trees and from you talking about it. And one of the questions I ask almost anybody that I interview is if you could in ten words or less, but it's never ten words, yeah. but <laughs> any nugget of wisdom around uh, the uh, advice on how to live in your own joy. Well, I think that the thing that we've all heard, at least I've heard a lot um, in the last 30 years that I've been paying attention, come from a place of love. Find that thing that you love and, uh, and pour your soul into it. When you do that, the rewards that you get are immeasurable. There is no value or price that you can put on it. Um, I think everything that has shown up in my life over the last 15 years, um, since probably since I conceived my son, so about 16 years ago. Um, when it comes from that place of love, it's priceless. And I put too many hours into this. Um, will I ever get the monetary value out of it? It doesn't matter. It's not about money. That's what I've really, really found with this is um, it's paying for itself and I'm making a profit, but it's not about that. 
the, the price, the, the, the value that I get back is seeing that person pick up a tree and knowing that it has the capacity or the ability to impact their lives in a positive way for years to come. And that's love. That's love. That's beautiful. Thank you. So you have a Facebook page, The World Tree. The World Tree. And spell world for everyone. W-H-I-R-L-E-D. World as in like twirled, twisted. And you sell your trees in the Portland area. Yep. And if anybody finds find you on Facebook, that's I the imagine, easiest way to get a hold of me. Right, they can message you there. Yeah, absolutely. And I have um, people have come to me with their own stones, their own base stone, and said, "Please make a tree for me." And they leave it up to me, and I just leave it up to spirit. And um, and then I just had somebody request yesterday that uh, there's a tree that I made that's on my Facebook page, I think uh, the biggest profile picture, and it's all crystals, and it's sitting on a piece of quartz. And she hadn't seen it yet, she's a friend of mine. And um, she was like, two years ago, I hand-picked these crystals. They're like Swarovski crystals, they're not stones. And um, she said, I never knew what I was gonna do with them. She said, will you make me a tree? And I said, yeah, of course. Can I commission you to make me a tree? And I said, absolutely. So I'm thrilled to do that for people um, when they have something special that they want incorporated into it, whether it's the base or you know, or they have a request that they want a specific stone or what have you. Right. But they're all unique. They're all individual. Um, they're all pieces of art. And while somebody might see a picture and say, I want one of those, it's never going to be exactly that. It's going to be what what it's supposed to be for that person. Well, we really appreciate you sharing not only your trees, but your heart. Thank you. And what, what emanates from you is total love, total joy. And that's what To Live For is all about. And it's just getting that out there and sharing it. And you've got that vibe going. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's a huge honor.